When you think of banned substances, you usually think about street drugs or maybe alcohol during the prohibition time. But in this video, we'll be exploring Canada's ban on the notorious illegal substance called margarine. It's difficult to imagine that at the same time alcohol was being bootlegged in Canada, the illicit substance, margarine, was also being smuggled into the country. To find out what the heck was going on, let's delve into a little history. During the Franco-Prussian War, France's dairy herds had been decimated and butter was so expensive that only the rich could afford it. The public was clamoring for that the government do something about it. In desperation, Emperor Napoleon III offered a cash prize to anyone who could produce a nutritious, tasty butter substitute, suitable for use by the military and the poor. So, in 1869, a French chemist patented a substance he created using beef tallow and skim milk called oleomargarine, the name later being shortened to just margarine. He expanded his initial manufacturing operation from France, but had little commercial success. So in 1871, he sold the patent to a Dutch company. By the 1880s, margarine was being produced and sold in many countries around the world, including Canada. Now that margarine is being sold in Canada, let's head back there and see what exactly is going on. Threatened by the importing of cheap margarine into the country, the dairy farmers vigorously opposed its sale. An Act of Parliament in 1886 forbade the manufacture and sale of margarine in Canada. And how did that ban come into effect so quickly? Well, the farmers had a huge voting power, and losing their votes would have been a disaster for any political party at the time. The ban was enforced until 1917, when wartime dairy shortages brought legalization of margarine in for a short time. By 1923, margarine was outlawed once again until 1948. Two companies in Newfoundland began producing margarine in 1883 using oils from seals, whales and fish and sold it for cheap. At this time, Newfoundland was not yet a part of Canada. Sir John Crosby, the Minister of Fisheries for Newfoundland, was inspired after a trip to Denmark where they had both a strong dairy and margarine industry. In 1925, he founded the Newfoundland Butter Company. A bit of an ironic name since they never produced any butter. This was Newfoundland's third margarine company. New Good Luck Margarine gives you both preferred unsaturates and preferred flavors. Preferred unsaturates for those concerned about the family diet, plus delicious flavor your whole family will prefer. Preferred unsaturates and preferred flavors. New Good Luck Margarine gives you both at no extra cost. Bootleg margarine was being produced and smuggled into Canada, where it was widely sold for half the price of butter. Following the Second World War, pressure in Canada mounted to legalize margarine. A royal commission studied the matter, but the Liberal government couldn't seem to choose between the dairy farmers and the consumers. So the affair was handed over to the Supreme Court to decide whether or not the ban was constitutional. In December 1948, the court lifted the ban, but concluded that it was an issue of property and civil rights, a matter that fell under provincial jurisdictions. The Butter Lobby filed an appeal with the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council in England, which still had the final say over our Supreme Court. At the same time, negotiations were underway for Newfoundland to join Canada. Discussions moved along nicely until the margarine issue came up. Canada insisted on banning the artificial spread. 
Sir John Crosby from the Newfoundland Butter Company lobbied hard to keep the business and Newfoundland's negotiators said that if it came to choosing between Canada and margarine, they would choose margarine. The negotiations between Newfoundland and Canada would result in Term 46 of the Newfoundland Act. This term prohibited the sale of margarine to the rest of Canada, but allowed the manufacture and sale of it within the new province of Newfoundland. The deal was struck, but many Newfoundlanders were not pleased with the decision, and it led to well-known Newfoundland political satirist and poet Greg Power to write The Ballad of Oleo Margarine. I pray that I shall never know a future without oleo, or live to see my little sons turn up their noses at my buns. But there is one with soul so dead who'd sacrifice our spread for bread, and ban from every new fee table our wholesome, rich, improved green label. On October 16, 1950, England's Privy Council agreed with the Supreme Court that margarine was a matter left to the provinces. With the removal of the original ban, it did not take long for Canadians to immediately jump on the margarine bandwagon. In 1954, 53,000 tons of margarine was produced. That rose to 129,000 tons by 1986. Provinces enacted rules that ensured margarine wouldn't be mistaken for butter. It was not allowed to be served in provincial institutions. Restaurants had to advertise that they were serving margarine and it was not allowed to be mixed with butter. Margarine sold in grocery stores needed to be clearly labeled and could not be marketed in such a way that it implied it was a dairy product. Margarine in its natural state is white and looks like lard, and the margarine companies tried to color it a soft yellow, like butter. The dairy lobby was having none of that, and provincial legislatures bowed to the pressure. Most provinces required margarine to be bright yellow or orange, and in some provinces it was to be colorless. Consumers, well, they were not impressed. They wanted margarine to look appetizing. In some provinces, such as Ontario, yellow dye tabs were included with colorless margarine so consumers could tint it themselves to make it visually appealing. But that wasn't necessary in other parts of Canada where the yellow tint was added during manufacture. In what may be one of Canada's most bizarre protests, homemakers in Ontario took to the streets in a march with dye tabs and mixing bowls in hand. Mr. Sedlick, how long does this operation take? From the time that I remove the margarine from the refrigerator to the time that I'm ready to serve it, approximately two hours. Why do you buy margarine? Well, I have my husband and two young sons to shop for, and I find margarine just a better buy. You get twice as much for your money, and it's as simple as that. Do you understand why you must mix the coloring into your margarine? I certainly do, and it makes my blood boil and I'm inconvenienced for at least two hours. Well, whose fault is it? The dairy farmers of Canada. They are overrepresented in our provincial legislature, and the vote-conscious politicians bow to the dairy farmers' wishes. And I say that it's not right that a few dairy farmers should be allowed to dictate to thousands of Canadian homemakers such as myself. If we are the homemakers of Canada and we want colored margarine, I feel we should have the right to buy it as such. And now is the time that something can be done about this injustice. Well, what do you think can be done about it? The only thing to do is to make the men who make the laws, the politicians who represent us as well as the dairy farmer, more aware of the injustice of this whole matter. Obviously, individual complaints have no effect on our politicians. So I say to the women homemakers of Canada that this is the time for us to organize, and if necessary, to carry our protest demonstrations to the respective provincial governments. Fast forward to the 1980s and most provinces had lifted the restriction. Under the terms of a 1994 agreement on internal trade, all provinces agreed that it was a trade barrier and promised to end margarine colouring restrictions by 1997. Ontario lifted its ban to sell butter-coloured margarine in 1995. 
Quebec was the last Canadian province and the last jurisdiction in North America to regulate margarine colouring, repealing its law requiring it to be colourless in July 2008. This came only because of the Western provinces winning a trade challenge against Quebec. The restrictions were illegal under the rules that prohibit governments from creating barriers to interprovincial trade over the sale of certain margarines, coffee whiteners and dessert toppings in the Quebec market. Both Ontario and Quebec still have legislation that restricts the trade in vegetable oil products. The power of the butter lobby has weakened, but intense pressure continues. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there are a few things you can do to help support our channel. Give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and leave a comment. Let us know if there's a Canadian story you would like us to cover in a future episode. For more content about Canada, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon to be notified of our next video upload.